not careful, I might finish by singing. <laughs> Amen. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for your word this morning. That inspires Lynn Taylor Brosoto. That gives life. That sets free or makes free. And you shall know the truth, the Bible says. And you shall be free. Thank you. We are getting the light that illuminates our mind and liberates us from philosophy, from beliefs that has tied us to what can never help us. It breaks off those yokes of our minds and it gives liberty to us. The Bible says your spirit, your spirit is this liberty. There's liberty in this place. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, this year, we are calling it Day of Divine Excellence. And you will excel in everything. In Jesus' name. So we are going to excel in everything. You know, excelling in everything. You become a success in all things. Can you say, I will be a success? In all areas of my life. <coughs> this year. I will never be disappointed. This year. I will not disappoint myself. <laughs> this year. Uh, you know you can appoint yourself or disappoint. Are those things there? Appoint, disappoint. I don't know if that English is correct. Uh, but uh, God called us to a life of excellence. excellence. God is so excellent. And he also gives you ability to excel in all areas of life. He is a success by nature and it makes you successful naturally. Eh? How can I can I say naturally? You know, we are above natural things. He will cause your excellence supernaturally. Naturally. He will turn things around. He will change things. He'll grow you. He will increase you. All you need to do is give your give him your attention. If you hear him, you'll succeed. You'll progress. You'll be healed. You'll be strong. Uh, Eve fell by listening to the devil. Before she listened to the devil, also, also, what was she? She was a success. The only day the devil came, she went down. Do you realize? Although these ones are only mature believers who realize this. You are rising and you are coming down is dependent on what you what you hear. It is on what you hear. Because what you hear is like a remote that controls what you do. You see the way you sit there and control that TV, that screen. That's how when you hear somebody say something, your life turns. Some that you refuse to do because you know it may not help. But if you do some, so what I'm saying is, as long as your attention is given to God, your success. Is inevitable. Your progress is inevitable. Your greatness is inevitable. The day that the devil wants to pull you out of hearing what God speaks, he has finished you. You don't have to be finished. You don't have to wait to be finished. After seeing it, you need to know the very day that that seed was sown in your mind. And that thing is controlling you. You died that day. 
God told Adam, if you eat of this fruit, you will surely. Did he die the same day? Yes. <laughs> he died the same day. God is not a liar. <laughs> he died that day, that day. But then we see after 900 years, the reality of that spoken word. It is the same way. If the word can, if words can kill, it can give life. So if you hear the word of God, then it brings back you to life. And you know what I like about the word of God as compared to one of the devils? The devils, God knows how to destroy and finish everything. You know, he makes everything zero. And then when God comes, he builds everything up. And beautifies more than which one is so powerful, the one of the devil or the one of God? Depends on the one you believe. Because some of us believe you know the devil said so much than what God said. So the, the words of God, with all its glory, if you receive and depend on it. You know when people say depend on God, trust in God. How you trust in God, we know how you trust in His word. People put aside His word and then they say we trust in God. Ignorance. That is that is ignorance. When you take His word, you have taken what God says. When you give attention to His word, and that's why I know a session like this, a meeting like this that we do every day, it has enough life. You know life? And everything that comes to let me say everybody because everybody is involved in everything. So if you are, if life is induced in you that life will reach every area of your life. Even not you go and do everything. As long as you have energy your work has ended. Amen. Why am I going there? I didn't plan to speak thus. My business is for us. This year, we need to hear the word of God more than the words of men. And we have to be influenced more by what God says than what man. I don't know how you began last year. But this year, it's different. This year, even for us, we are not beginning this year the way we began last year. This year we are on another level. You know another level? No, you just need to know where you are. Where are you? <laughs> this year we are on another level. What we have risen. One of the things I know about this year is we have risen above the challenges of last year. What challenged us last year and intimidated us last year cannot intimidate us this year. We have overgrown it. We have risen above it. Amen. Yes, you need to rise above challenges of life. You have to rise above habits and behaviors that keeps you down. You have to rise above. There's a way God you know when the word of God comes, it is for our lifting. You know lifting? It lifts you from where you are. I was listening to Pastor Jack on Sunday. Not on Sunday, on Friday. Just listen to him. Yeah, he was talking about good lifting. David was saying, he took me from, you know, a pit. That is so deep. And then he says, Natalizanga, do you know? <laughs> no. You want somebody to help you? <laughs> His God has taken me from such environment. You know, I was listening to that man that Friday. I'm like, wow. And there's a way that man explained the word of God. I get surprised. I just listened to him. I enjoy that man. When he begins preaching. There's a way he takes a scripture that you know. 
and he just I don't know what he does to it until you feel like you've never read the bible and then explain these things in a way hmm? and then he saying this here hmm? what he was saying that he took me from slippery ground and set my feet on the rock amen may that be our portion know where you thought you might not come out of what you thought is too difficult hard for you it's too simple to god yeah uh, today i'm speaking about the grace excelling in living amen i've spoken about excelling in spiritual disciplines in character <clears throat> at the workplace at the which other places have we spoken about i've been speaking about excellence since the year began and i'm still speaking about this this one i speak until the end of february you know we create money by speaking that's like you create excellence in other areas of life i will excel here i will do this until i excel I, we also need to say i am also going to excel in my finances this is in jesus name it doesn't matter how small money you are handling now the grace of god can cause finances come your way like you have never known god can open a new source of income for you this year you can retain the one you have last year <laughs> a new one can what is wrong if you have streams of income so that you're not just watching one area may this year bring that in jesus name god desires you to excel in finance what do we do without finances in this way there's nothing we can do without finances and there is a biblical way to operate in abundance of finance biblical way there's a way you can rise above the systems of this world of economy and operate from another system that is higher than this one. this means you need to buy into the idea of who of God. I think the system of this world we all know. Have you read about finance? Money somebody's written about money. They tell you about and then God also has his story. You see the, the most challenging thing about Christians is especially in the area of finance they don't listen more to the Bible. They listen to the financial experts who are not believers. Who themselves are also suffering. <laughs> Anybody who does not live by the principle of the Bible, irrespective of how rich you think he is, is very poor. And somebody you look at him and you think like he doesn't have money, he's very rich, like me. Amen. I look like I don't have money. I have my friends. I'm so rich. Richer than everybody here. <laughs> or richer than every let me not you know your riches depends on your faith especially when you get born again because God has unlimited resource for you you need to develop your faith and access it I believe in God who does wonders no wonders I believe in God who does wonders the Bible says them that know their God they shall be strong and they shall do all that God is expecting is for you to make your faith strong in him and he will display wonders that the world has never seen all that he needs you to do is to believe in what he says because even finances he can release what you have never imagined 
And all of us said there's some fine amount of money we have never thought of. And may it come to account this year. In Jesus' name. Some of these things he does it because of his own name. <laughs> he does it because of his own name. We want to make his name great. I want to see millionaires and billionaires who know that God made them to be the way they are. Not these ones, when they get money, they think that when they come to a church, they have to sponsor. They look at a pastor like that. They are the God of that, that church. You know, God knows how to make you. No, and this is my, my prayer. I've made these prayers since December. God raised people in this house. I was listening to Pastor Chris. You know, God can bring anybody, a millionaire from outside, and meet all your needs. Like what donors are doing. They simply come and give you some money and they mess you up. Those are not even used to handling that big money. You even forget where you are. You even forget where the church is. You sit there and dream. There's a guy when you were in, when I was in Bungoma. Says Pastor, pray for me. We want to be. I want to be M MCA. As 2013. And the guy became an MC. He forgot where the church is. Literally forgetting. He's been coming every Sunday that he stopped coming. He married the second wife. He hmm? and then he began another kuepa. God desires your success. But he wants you to be mature even when success comes. Amen. I want you to be mature. Not to be, not to be taken as a flood by that success. Imagine at Jona Marsabi before he came back. Mama Maji. Mtu ame barikiwa baka baraka imeenda na yeye. Yes. He has disappeared. And all the way things has changed. Now I want to see him as a lion himself. No, no, no. Pastor, like this was saying. I've ever desired, you see, many times when I'm doing programs, big programs, God can bring some people and meet my need. Like somebody can even bring a million, two million. What the, his members cannot afford to do. And then he said, God, I now pray that everybody who is under this ministry, be it leaders, be it members, I pray that they be that millionaires. And he prayed by beginning with his leaders. When I went to what explosion 2020, 2020 Pastor Lai says, I want my son so can give 100,000. Rania, all his pastors went there. You know, I sat there, that's why he said, which kind of pastors is this? Pastors give you 100,000 each. And these are pastors, 100. I had the same Pastor Lai says, Pastor Chris says, Pastor Chris says, I'm the one who gives first. In fact, he says, <laughs> my leaders don't give some small money. If you ask for some small money, they don't come. He says, when I ask for one million, all of them run there. What a standard. <laughs> May we get that grace. If I say, if I ask for giving, I'm saying, Pastor, Pastor Chris, pastors. Hmm? I want you to begin imagining giving one million. Not only. You know, if you begin giving one million, that means you are bigger than that. Not, 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 I don't know what is in the bank account right now. But bigger money than what you have ever seen.
if you see big ministries it began like this and the people that began you see if it is God who has really called somebody the future of these people cannot compare with the beginning of that of those people the Bible says even if you are beginning is small. Your latter end shall greatly increase. I don't know if you hear this. In other words, the anointing has ability to turn you into a wonder. The Bible says, them that were following the, 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 the team that David had, those people Many of them had a lot of debts of some other people. Debts, you know debts? They had debts. The, the team he began with. And then he formed out of them mighty men, the Bible says. It's about the anointing. On the one of God. It can open door anywhere. It can bring anything that you desire. And you know God does this because he wants to reveal himself in an area. Second Corinthians chapter 8. If you read the whole of this chapter, You realize that uh, Paul is trying to speak to these people and he's giving them an example of the Philippian church in Macedonia. He gives them, you know, there's a way sometimes you grow in one area <laughs> and you totally forgive my English and grow in some other area. And one of the areas that the church has never been growing in, even when you look at the, the offering of a church, the monthly income of a church, is finance. You look at every church and the amount they get monthly. It is not growing. Paul is trying to point the church at Philippi to these people and tells them look hmm? let me read now I want you to know dear brothers and sisters what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia they are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor but they are also filled with abundant joy which has overflowed in rich generosity for I can testify that they, can, they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. Oh. You know that one is Kutokoza Mu. You give more than what you have. Metokoza Mu. Ugijaribu tuku kuguza kitu kidogo kidogo tupe pali hata munga shuguliki. Hata ujuli piana. We are reading about Solomon here on Thursday. Solomon gave offering until God was waiting for night to come. <laughs> God was waiting. <laughs> but this man received so that he appears in the dream. Imagine Mungu na kungoje ulale. Because you gave. <laughs> Look at verse 3. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. Hmm? Jerusalem is the mother church. Where the mother church is. 
I wish we learned this secret. These people understood their source. Their source is if that church in Jerusalem was not there, Paul could not have saved, been saved. You know, people are not mature expect help from like for example from your parents if they are very rich you sit there and just wait to get from them if they are very rich baba dikufa watoto wanangangana kuchukua kile kitu nye baba ali oni baba ali ipata aje hini yangu hini yangu hini yangu fight mbaka tunayenda wanapeleko kwa kotini Wote nimesema ngoja bunduki inashika inash, mtu bunduki anakuja anaambia we <laughs> These people were giving because I know there were some challenges in there was famine there Jerusalem and there was a bit of challenge But they know how to appreciate the source of the anointing that caused the salvation and progress they were always asking Paul they want to give do you want to give well one of the reasons as to why any young believer that any young minister that is wise looks for a very successful minister of the gospel and give it to them isn't that those people have millions and they are struggling with your small money here <laughs> but they give it to these people because that grace that causes abundance to come will come on you and they begin operating like they are operating because even then they didn't begin big they began from somewhere like my uh, pastor Lai has been sowing in the ministry of Morris Solulo. He's been giving there. What you see when you hear the legacy of Solulo and Lai, you realize that he's, he's coming up. The guy has done so much in the US, but also he's doing so much in Mombasa. These Philippians felt this anointing, this grace came from where? You know, you will only appreciate God when He brings you from a place that you never thought you can come out. You have tried by yourself. <laughs> Him, when He does for you things that no man can do for you. And then from your own heart you say, if it is not God, I will not be. That time you will not think that anything is expensive for God. Because if you hear these people, he says, I know their poverty. When he says their poverty, he knows that they don't have enough money. And he says, if they give everything. These are people, are they crazy? Not cra- they, they know. In other words, they are grateful. Because of what God has done in their in their life. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They begged us. We want to give them. Who is begging who today to give to the men of God. Who are those who are in Jerusalem? You consider the top leadership. We have Peter there. We have John. John. That John is the John of the brother of Jesus. Even James. No. James here. Yeah, sorry. James you are talking about. In fact the person in charge of the church at Jerusalem is James. He's the pastor. 
Peter is bishop of a single thing that is happening. That James is a brother of Jesus. He got born again when Jesus died. He was among the people that was laughing at Jesus. Hey, you know, you know before Jesus died on the cross, they didn't believe him. All of all these siblings believed after he resurrected. He said, we are joking with somebody here. <laughs> and one of them became a pastor of that church but the person that Jesus left and gave the mandate is who? Peter it is under his leadership this thing is happening so they are looking at the source the very anointing that God raised from the beginning and they sent money there they, they want to give there because you see if that Jerusalem church has caused all these other churches to erupt to come up and people's lives are being the same grace that is happening there can happen at Macedonia the same work they are doing they can do at Macedonia if you see me give heavily in pastoralized church whatever happened from the time pastoralized began that church until today that great work that we see can happen in in Marsabit and they even did more than we had hoped for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us just as God wanted them to do. First they gave themselves to who? To God. And he says then to us. How do they give themselves to, the, to, to God? You even see it. In fact, if you have not given yourself to God, you will not give yourself to the man of God. Can I repeat this? If you have not given yourself to God, you cannot give yourself to the man of, of God. And how do you give to yourself to the man of God? Number one, by being available to hear the word that God has given you. You know when you say somebody is a man of God, you are simply saying all the messages he is bringing is from God. But what if you say a man of God and then you are not available for the teaching? Do you believe he's a man of God? I doubt. Because if he's a man of God, he came with a message. And that message is for you. And if you're not available for that message, you are just pretending to believe in the man of God. Paul has been teaching these people. Paul has been teaching these people. They are available for him. If they are available for the, the man of God, it is a sure proof that they have given themselves to who? And they cannot spare anything that God deserves. They give. That's why we have to give like a crazy person. You know crazy. And God also will react in a crazy way. Amen. Why did they do this? He says first they gave themselves to God and to God. If you look at people who had they come to church. Even when you ask for giving. Oh. Pastor Jack said when I seek you are you think you are a man? They begin becoming uncomfortable. No, no, no. Master Sasa, and I could just go near this. What they don't know is if that person is really a man of God and they give, 
what they're giving is like a seed. You know what a seed is? You put in the ground. How much do you expect? You put one seed of maize. On that comb, how, do, how, much do, how many do you have there? On one. When you give like that, that thing you are giving will come back multiplied. But if you give with the right hand, these people gave everything. As the Jack was saying, at least until you give your fare and you walk on foot and you go home and pass and quit and and you feel nothing. <laughs> and you feel <laughs> this man is surprising. <laughs> sacrifice these people have come from far because <laughs> you know if you give and you feel pain you feel pain Sometimes you give with pain. Sawa tu wote ni pain. You cannot understand how great God is. And the struggle with that small thing you have. You're not sponsoring God. You don't sponsor a church like this. Even if you have millions and you come here, we are not after your money. In fact, you are after our, our wisdom. <laughs> That's, it. That's why you come here. You know that what is happening here will shape up your life and make it better. Yes, that is it. You know that as you're coming here, things are improving in your life. <laughs> Don't look at me as if I am now looking for money. Looking for all means to, to rob you. No. I'm saying no. In fact, anytime you give, it is about appreciating. It's giving is one way of being grateful. One of being grateful. Look at my life if God not have been in what will it be like? Huh? How much wisdom has he put in my head that I should not have had if I'm not coming in his presence? It's out of, you know, when you're grateful and you give to somebody, I'm grateful. I'm give, you give it cheerfully. Is that true? This one that you are forced, you know, you, you think that you're being forced. Sometimes when somebody says, you know, I was always feeling uncomfortable every time I go to Pastor Lai's meeting. After preaching, he says, look for a very good knot. Which one is that for your information? If you're in Kenya. I was I've been feeling uncomfortable like the best. You see the the spirit of stinginess is reacting. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> the best. Now, even even Pastor Jack Matejo, when he came here, he said, "Look for the best." If if you are not benefiting here, why are you coming here? Then you choose what to do and what not to do. <laughs> you can you can. I mean, look at this people. He says they get. Listen, as I'm speaking, I know, I know this year, we need to see more money than last year. I'm saying more money. And it is possible to have more money than last year. Is it possible? Now, some years we might have just waited on that salary every year. 
The only source you know is God can create a new source. I mean a new, I am saying a new because I know it will happen this year. It will happen. And then he says, where were we? Verse 6. Verse 6. We were reading verse 5. They even did more than we had hoped. For their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. And then they says in verse 6. So we have agitators who encouraged your giving in the first place to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. Then he says in verse 7, Since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, in gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. I want, let me read <clears throat> King James Version for that. Chapter 8 verse 7. He says, Therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith, utterance, knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us see that you abound in this grace also are you growing in your faith i'm asking are you growing in your faith are you growing in understanding the word of god hmm? in our trance are you is the way you're speaking changing so that you're increasing more wisdom in the way you speak than before. Or even you're preaching. Some of us are preaching here. <laughs> are there some changes that is happening even the way you talk? He says, if that is it, in your love toward us, also he says, do you love the men of God? I don't know. <laughs> yes, if you have the... This is also grow in the grace of giving. Just also grow in giving. How much are you giving when you are in college on Sunday? I was giving 50 bob. How much are you giving when you are in college? 20 bob, 20, 50. <laughs> so how different is your giving after you began earning? Imagine if you are giving 50 million in college, 100 today. <laughs> there has to be some seriousness somewhere. <laughs> there has to be some, some seriousness. And then how much is your offering on Sunday? Oh, the, the whole month. Don't talk about tight, yeah? Look at your offering in a month. And then look at your salary. And the expenditure for food. <laughs> Realize food is taking almost a half of the whole salary. Food. <laughs> this stomach. This stomach is dangerous. He's just sitting here and waiting for things to come. <laughs> so that it even leave it. If I give, give, what will I eat? The, the thing is asking you for things. <laughs> I <laughs> want to light. So, gee. <laughs> uh, this challenge is big. Eh? Pastor is really challenging us. But you know, the truth is, when you give, <laughs> you know, Pastor Lai, sometimes I watch him, I get you. You know, he says, I might not even need this money. <laughs> he says, but I just want to help you. <laughs> he says, I don't need this money. But I want you to benefit because every time you give to this ministry, the truth is the work is doing is so much. It's so much. 
Millions. If he has over 200 employees in his church. 200. Yes. What explosion they do it with like 40, 50 million, 60 million. What explosion? TV is the most expensive. Uh-huh. What else? If you look at the programs they run, those are millions. You see, in our churches, the reason story we have less money is because we are doing nothing. The only thing you are doing is Sunday service. <laughs> for that, for Sunday service, you only pay rent. <laughs> you only pay rent. What else? Huh? <laughs> There's no money that is going into mission. The expense of the mission should be more than these other expenses. But if you're not doing more expense, if you're not doing missions, what are you looking for? Why do you look for money? Or you just beautify the church and sit in doing nothing on the outside? Hmm? In our mass, in, the, in these churches, all go and see. Because there's almost no outreach. That's why they don't even care whether people are, when people are not giving. Here we care whether you're giving. Why did this man care? Why was he about? Why was he? He's, he's the one raising them spiritually. And he said, You need to give. We have radio program. Uh -huh. High school ministry. Liberation summit. The meeting we go from one place and do to different churches, conferences. That is money. We need more camera. You see what we have here. <laughs> this one. I know this other one has, has arrived this morning. It will be here. But look at what you use. We need three cameras, good ones, of 200,000. Amen. Yes. How many people are coming because they are watching us on YouTube? Borrow you came because you've been following. Another friend has also arrived. He's been watching. He can say, like, Kwapi. He was asking sometimes, but that's a yako yuko yuko yuko. See, he na fanya kazi kitu. Wi Fi, si juu ni. Kiu si pona Wi Fi kwa kanisa, una juu ya kanisa, si serious. Sindio. Eh, yuko kanisa, si serious. <laughs> Atu naomba wawe serious. Amen. We are praying for this. Uh, we thank God for this church is called what? And you will interpret here. Full gospel. They are doing Kesha there. I hear now every Friday that day. Now we, we are bringing, let them come up. I sat with Pastor Silva. We are going to come up. We are going to come up. We are going to come up. We I told him one occasion I go up. Chamusha what? Wamuke Kosingis. You need to wake up. But I'm saying all these things that we are doing, it needs money. That means you must also, as your faith is increasing, and you know God is surprising. He doesn't say because your faith has grown, I will give you much money. <laughs> what you are receiving is directly proportional to your giving. Directly proportion. If it is from their own effort, many people live from their own strength, not from the giving that God gives them. So this year we must rise to a level where, like I normally tell you here, if I want to do anything, I will do. My doing does not depend depend on the giving of people here. Sometimes on Sunday you have 750, 2000. Uh-huh. But I have expenses of over 80k. If I, I depend their giving, <laughs> I will not go anywhere as a pastor. So how this ministry gives determines how God gives back to this ministry. So we also live as a ministry from our giving. That's why we will not lack. That's Pastor Whitecliffe asks me. 
Ya, lakini pasta level yenye una operate. Na ikanisa yako ianza jana. Hata pesa yenye anakuja. It's the level of your giving that determines how much God is. Otherwise we remain broke and sit there and cry to God, please God help us, you do what? No. Amen. Lord, we are grateful for this service. We desire to grow up and increase in the knowledge of your word. We also want to be financially excellent. I mean, we want to be financially excellent. I mean, financially excellent. We want to have so much money. So that we can buy vehicles. We can buy anything we want cash in the name of Jesus. And you will never fail us in any way. When you ask us to give, we have seen people even giving land in the early church. Giving so much. There's nothing expensive for you. In fact, you own it all. You're only looking for room to bless us as we give. And this year, Lord, we are grazing in that, in Jesus' name. We're going to handle more money even as we faithfully give into your work. We bless your name in Jesus' name. We can do offering very fast and then we finish our